I'm the Savage Weight Fred Yehi. I'm from Waterloo, Iowa. I've been wrestling for eight years. I've been all over the planet. I've been in the ring with some of the toughest. And the toughest actually refer to me as the toughest. Where I grew up, I mean, there were drugs. There were a lot of uh, negative influences around me. So when you grow up in that kind of environment and you see the older kids, I looked up to any kid who was older than me. When you see them doing certain things, you kind of think it's really cool. I mean, this is no pun. Since I was yay high, since I was in diapers. Like, this is something that I've always wanted to do. It's one of those things you can't really explain. I knew I wanted to wrestle, and I knew that if I did go down the path of, of drugs and alcohol and, and running with the crowd, then my chances of becoming a great professional wrestler, eh, it wasn't really gonna happen. I stuck to wrestling. I stuck to taking care of my body. Now here I am. I'm in this tournament because I am a wrestler. I mean, I have the heart of a wrestler. I also have the ears of a wrestler. I wrestled collegiate B1. Uh, I wrestled amateur. They called me the savage weight. My philosophy is technique takes a back seat to brutality. So I just get in there and I just get it done. And I believe that Ring of Honor wants guys who have that mindset of getting out there and getting it done. I was a really big fan of, of Ryan Danielson. I was a really big fan of, of low key. You know, their physicality, the technique, and, and you can tell who really has the heart of a professional wrestler. Silas Young is tough as nails. He's what, an 18 year pro. He's skilled, he knows what he's doing. I plan to push him to his limit. I plan to go 110%. I plan to be the savage weight. I'll put it to you this way. I don't need to punch you in the face or, or choke you or do anything illegal to hurt you. I can hurt you in, in so many different ways. Wearing you down, <laughs> that can be a pretty painful process. And I'm really good at that. I have a finisher that can beat anyone. The Kojima Clutch. And I actually put my own little twist to it. I'd like the Silas Young will feel that. Even with this recent pandemic, you know, a lot of people saw a lot of their hard work seemingly go down the drain. Like I put in a whole lot of work, you know, building up momentum like all last year, just making like a lot of personal choices, cutting off relationships. And I mean, I already had a narrow focus, but even making it even more narrow to where it was, it was a bit uncomfortable. And then to see everything uh, just come to a close, man, it would have been so easy to just give up and say, ah, here it is. When I worked so hard for it, there it goes all up in smoke. I know I had to make a choice. Uh, yes, the gyms were closed. I couldn't roll around on the mat. I couldn't lift weights, but I still held myself accountable to getting up at four in the morning and I'd go jump the fence. They had the schools locked down. He said, hey, if you jump this fence, this is trespassing. I knew I couldn't do it during the daytime, so I'd get up earlier, jump the fence, and still go hit my sprints. Yeah, I had to do whatever I could do. A life has a way of, of testing us to see, if, to see if what we say we want, if it's really, if it's truly authentic. And I know for a fact that when it comes to my success in this professional wrestling business, I know it's very, very authentic. And I will walk away with the Ring of Honor pure title. I am the last real man in pro wrestling, Silas Young. I grew up with five older brothers, so I think it goes without saying that I got my ass handed to me a lot. A lot of my older brothers, they were athletes, they played hockey, they played football. And like any young man growing up, you, you look up to the other men in your family, the, the elders. And, and seeing this, it made me want to be an athlete myself. So I dabbled a little bit in football, a little bit in baseball. But at a young age, from about the ages 8 to 14, I was actually in competitive gymnastics. Pro wrestling's a business where your body gets beat up, it gets hurt a lot. Flexibility is an important thing. I think that's something that's definitely aided and benefited me growing up and coming through wrestling. And through the early years of my career, I was able to work with a lot of guys who were working for Ring of Honor at the time. Guys like Nigel McGuinness, Chris Sabin, Jimmy Jacobs. And the opportunity to work with those guys really lit a fire under me to say, you know, Ring of Honor, that's the place I want to be. You know, Ring of Honor is a different type of, of wrestling company. It's not the type of wrestling company where you get to come in, you get opportunities that you haven't earned. When you come to Ring of Honor, it's like starting over. It's like starting fresh. And just like anybody else in this company, I had to start at the bottom and I had to work my way to the top. I've been fortunate enough to be one of only a few men in Ring of Honor 
who've been a multi-time world television champion. To be completely honest with you, a lot of these people who think that they can study me, they can figure out what my style is, I think they're gonna be in for a big surprise. You know, I'm a guy who likes to talk a lot of crap, uh, and likes to make people question themselves. During this process, if I had had the opportunity, being able to get into the gym, being able to get into a ring regularly, and more importantly, I did some BJJ training. I talk a lot about how Josh Woods is my, my, my student, you know, and I'm his mentor. But the fact of the matter is Josh has rubbed off a lot on me as well. I think there's going to be uh, a few things here in this tournament that people aren't going to be expecting. And that was the whole plan, was to come in with a different game plan so you couldn't study me, so you can't beat me. Because the fact of the matter is Josh Woods is in a different block as me, and, and I'm his mentor. And, and in a perfect world, it's Josh Woods versus the last real man in the finals of this thing. The first round, I have a, a guy by the name of Fred Yehai. Uh, I, I have to be honest with you, I've seen a little bit of his work. Like I said, he's he's a guy who hasn't wrestled for Ring of Honor before. He's a guy that definitely has a, a well-known name, a guy who's well-traveled, uh, he's actually very good at what he does. Some people might say that he has a little bit of the advantage, but I like to think I have a little bit of the home field advantage. I think I definitely got my work cut out for me, but I think uh, I think the first round's kind of a gimme. The fact of the matter is, I was in the last Peer Rules wrestling match there has been in Ring of Honor. It was a little over a year ago. It was myself and probably a guy who I think a lot of people would think is maybe a favorite to win this tournament, John Gresham. When it was me and him in a Peer wrestling match, I didn't have to cheat. I didn't need to cheat. I wrestled off my Peer ability. And when it was said and done, it was John Gresham who had to cheat. So do I feel like I have a good shot in this tournament? I don't feel like I have a good shot in this tournament. I feel like this tournament is mine, no problem. That's Ian Rigamani, and that's Caprice Coleman, and I'm Gwen McKay, and we're the Ring of Honor announce team. We're all together on camera, and we just put the second week of the Ring of Honor Pure Tournament in the books. And man, what a week it was. It was. My guy, David Finley, my pick his to win guy. the whole thing. Continues his role. Big win over Rocky Romero. His mentor, he goes on now to face Jay Lethal. Kind of might be the test of David Finley's career, but I'm looking forward in a couple, a couple of weeks to see that match, Caprice. Oh, the match that I was looking forward to came, and it came in a blaze. Delirious coming back, adding on like 20 pounds Shredded of muscle. Too. I could Shredded see like every shreds. vein in his arm. Oh it was my God, crazy. amazing. Going against Matt Stout. Matt Seidel came and showed that he was proven that he can win this tournament. That third eye that nobody sees, it was almost like he could see what the lyrics was thinking, and he pulled out a win. The, the, the returning Matt Seidel, by the way. I'm just saying that <laughs> maybe some of us what was that? <laughs> suggested that on Ring of Honor week by week, but what I'm not going to say who. Right back in Ring of Honor where he belongs. Well, returning Matt Seidel. You can't talk about returns without talking about our debuting stars, too. Still to come in this tournament, Russ Taylor, Tony Deppin, and next week, for the first time, we're going to see Fred Yehai in Ring of Honor. It was one-on-one -on -one against Silas Young and Josh the Goods Woods looking to continue his role. Goes one on one against Kenny King. We talked about Gresham and Lethal maybe meeting in the finals. What about Woods and Young maybe meeting in the finals well, too? Caprice? I like the way the tag teams are being split up, but they're able to show their pure wrestling ability. And what better place to do it than Ring of Honor for the pure wrestling title? I don't really want to see teams broken up over a title. Wow. Our team will never be broken up because there's no titles we're competing for, right? That's true. <laughs> there you go. Well, fans, I can't wait to see those matches next week. We hope you tune in. Check it out, ROHwrestling.com, Fight.tv. Those are the places to watch your local Sinclair stations as well. Caprice and I are ready to call the action. Quinn, we're ready to lead you in and out of the action too. So we can't wait to be there, and we're looking forward to it. And just do whatever I do. Chill! <laughs>